We are ready to go. Sound looks good. What's up guys? I'm Worley from Yelron Blog and today we're going to make this simple plywood laptop desk for the nook in my bedroom. My girlfriend Eden and I live in a pretty small apartment with only a couple spots where we can work on our laptops or read a book. I was craving a third space and we don't take full advantage of our cozy bedroom that has tons of natural light. Eden recently moved our bed, which created this awesome nook next to the window. Last week, I realized that this nook has the perfect amount of space for a laptop desk. I took some measurements of the available floor space and started designing in AutoCAD. I did a few design iterations until I settled on this cool modern shape. I incorporated a simple cubby below the work surface where we can stow our laptops. The desk is made of five pieces and you can get all of them from one sheet of half inch plywood. If you want to make this desk yourself, you can pause the video here and get all the dimensions you'll need. Just keep in mind that the two rectangular pieces have angled front edges and I dimensioned their larger top faces. I picked up a sheet of half inch aspen plywood from my local Home Depot and got them to cut it into thirds so that I could fit it in the back of my Hyundai Accent. I could not have had a more beautiful February day to work outside. I found a sunny spot in Eden's parents' backyard and started laying out the legs of the desk. I did the majority of the layout with a tape measure and a framing square. To get the curves onto the plywood, I found a bowl and a glass that have about the same radius of curvature as what I designed. It's hard not to be silly happy when it's technically the middle of Canadian winter, but you can work outside in a t-shirt. With one leg translated to plywood, I used my jigsaw to slowly and carefully cut it out. A lot of people hate on the jigsaw, but as long as you have the right blade for the job, go really slow and keep it to relatively thin material, you can get really clean, accurate results. And if you don't have a bandsaw or access to a CNC, it's a really accessible way to make stuff with non-square geometry. I trace this leg onto another piece of plywood to make the second leg. Jigsaw blades inevitably deflect towards the bottom of the cut, meaning that the bottom of the piece will always be a little off from what you lay out. So, I made sure to trace the same side of the leg that I laid out and cut on. Next, I moved on to the two rectangles that form the top of the desk and the bottom of the cubby. The front edge of these pieces are beveled to match the angle formed by the sides of the desk. I used one of the legs to set my circular saw to match this angle. Then, I cut the angled edges for both pieces. I reset my circular saw to square and cut these two pieces to their final size. The fifth and final piece to make was the back of the desk. I used my jigsaw for the rest of the cuts, even the straight ones. Unless I'm cutting on a flat surface, I kind of prefer making long straight cuts with my jigsaw over the circular saw. Since I was cutting the plywood propped on 2x4s, it was just a little easier and more casual to use the jigsaw. And it's worth pointing out that this is probably the least visible piece. I laid out the arch by marking the high point and then sketching in the rest of the curve. I took advantage of working in the open air to give all the edges a quick sanding. Just in time for sunset, I packed up my car and brought the pieces back to my apartment to assemble. Before touching any glue, I dry fit and clamped all the pieces together so that the desk supports itself during assembly.
The screw heads are exposed on this desk, so I wanted to make sure that their placement looks clean and deliberate. Across the piece, I spaced the screws at four inches and inset them at a quarter inch from the edge. I unclamped the top and consequently the bottom in preparation for adding glue. The screws in the desk are all inch and a quarter, number eight Robertson wood screws. Next, I moved on to marking out the holes to attach the back piece. The back attaches on three sides, to the inside of the legs and the underside of the top. The last piece to install was the bottom of the cubby. I made sure these screws were right in line with the screws on top of the desk. Before gluing, I arranged some squeeze clamps to form a kind of shelf for the piece to sit on while I screwed it into place. With the desk assembled, I flipped it over and hammered some glides into the feet. This makes the desk a bit more stable and lets it slide around like Chance the Rapper. To prep for finish, I hand sanded all the exposed faces and edges with 120 grit. I did a final sanding pass with 220 grit. And don't worry, wiping the desk with my hand wasn't my only dust removal measure before applying finish. I finished the desk with wipe-on satin polyurethane. I really like the look of satin finish, but I think if I were to do this product again, I would finish the desk with a gloss polyurethane or a wax finish. Satin finish has a bit of a texture, and I like having a really smooth tabletop. I gave the polyurethane four hours to dry, did a light sanding with 220 grit, wiped away the fine dust and applied a second coat. I let the finish set for a couple days and this baby was done. I am really happy with how this desk turned out. Details like the angled front, aligned screw heads, and curved legs give this simple plywood project a really refined and modern feel. But before putting the desk in its new nook home, it needed a chair. I headed over to my local Habitat for Humanity Restore and found this awesome comfortable chair for only $25 Canadian. That's basically free in US dollars. I really lucked out with how much this chair fits the bright, clean, and cozy aesthetic of our room. We've had the Nook desk set up for about a week now, and we've been using it all the time. It's so nice having that third space, and not feeling like my only option is to go to a cafe when I've been doing a bunch of video editing in the apartment and need a change of scenery. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out the rest of my channel. I have videos about making all sorts of stuff. If you're interested in directly supporting my work, check out the links in the description. And as always, have a great day.